Hello everyone. This is Nicole Steele. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and I'm the owner and creator of The Joyful Stamper. And I'm proud. I go live every Thursday at 11 a.m. Eastern Time. You can watch the replay, but whether you're watching the replay or you're joining me live right now, I'm happy you're here. Because we're going to stamp. I have two techniques to show you today. One is called the kissing technique. And the other one is, um, it's a braiding technique that I just learned from my team leader. So I'm super excited about those. All right. But first I want to tell you about a couple things going on with, in the Stampin' Up! world. So the paper pumpkin kit that is December's is called Berry Comforting. I think it looks adorable with the teddy bear. And I'm not sure if this is a sneak peek of some of the stamp images or not, but this, um, December kit makes cards. I can't remember exactly how many I think think it might be eight cards and they're standard size the four and a quarter inch by five and a half inches but it looks adorable and I'm wondering if this is a sneak peek of maybe the envelope or one of the card fronts I don't know but if you're interested in subscribing you have to subscribe by December 10th and you can choose one month you can get it month by month or you can um, commit to anywhere from three months to 12 months and you'll save more money the longer you get the prepaid subscription for. So this is the link to go to if you're interested in Paper Pumpkin. And then what we have ongoing is Curvy Celebrations. This is going all the way through until January 4th. And I have seen some gorgeous, gorgeous cards made with the Curvy um, Celebrations. This is going to be, these, these stamps and dies are going to be in the January through June 2021 mini catalog. This Christmas paper and the Curvy Christmas stamp set are only going to be available through January 4th. They, these two will not be in the mini catalog. And then if you want to, you can type in one number and you will get all of this at 10% off. So, you know, sometimes you just, you just have to have it all, right? <laughs> but, um, so we have a 10% discount bundle. Um, these Curvy Christmas stamp set do work with the Curvy dies. And it looks like the Christmas paper, it's a six by six inch pack. And those patterns, the colors may be Christmas, but the patterns are not specific to Christmas. So you could use this long after the holidays are over. So if you're interested in the Curvy Celebrations bundle, you can um, head to my store, shopwithnicole.stampinup.net, and I would really appreciate your business. And now let's stamp. Here's my spot. Okay, and um, let's get started. So this is the card I have for you today. Um, as a demonstrator, there are certain Facebook groups that I have access to, and I saw the kissing technique done with the poinsettia petals stamp set, and I, I thought it looked pretty. And I had realized I happened to have both those sets. So we're going to use poinsettia petals, and we're going to use the buffalo check um, background stamp. Now you can use this technique with any background stamp that you want. The trick is to have a fairly open, solid stamp to do this technique with. You would not want to do this with a highly detailed line art stamp image. And I'll show you what I mean when we start this card, okay? And these colors are Mary Merlot and Just Jade. Okay, so we are starting with a five and a half inch by eight and a half inch piece of Mary Merlot cardstock, and I scored and folded it down the middle at four and a quarter inches. I really love the color combination of Just Jade and Mary Malo for Christmas. I think it's stunning. Okay, and what I am going to glue to my card front, sorry, I thought I dropped a piece of paper, is a five and three eighths by four and an eighth inch piece of Just Jade cardstock. And I'm going to use, oops, that's my empty bottle. I'm going to use multi-purpose liquid glue to attach this to the card front. This is a very simple, um, it's a very simple card. It doesn't have multiple layers, not too many layers, I, but using that kissing technique just really makes it look very, very special. So now I have a five and a quarter inch by four inch piece of very vanilla cardstock. I thought very vanilla looked really nice with the Mary Merlot and Just Jade shades here. Now because I'm going to be stamping off 
um, the edges of my cardstock. I'm actually going to put some scratch paper underneath this just so because the ink won't dry on this surface and I'm afraid that it'll I'll put something on top of it and it won't be good. It'll get on all my other projects. Now I do not have a Just Jade um, ink pad but I do have a Just Jade stamp and write marker so I'm going to use that to stamp my leaves and let's get started with the technique. So my Buffalo Check background stamp is going to be nearby and I like to leave my my background stamps in the stamp case. I see no reason to take them out unless I'm going to be using them with a stamp positioning um, tool like the Stamparatus. I just I don't have a block big enough to um, to put this background stamp on. I find it easy just to leave it in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm taking one of the poinsettias and I'm going to stamp it in Mary Merlot ink uh, randomly around this very vanilla piece of cardstock. Now I like to hold my stamp down to the paper for a few seconds just to give the ink time to transfer into that, that card stock. Okay, put another one there. And you can fill it in as much or as little as you like. Okay, that looks good. And now what I'm going to go back and do is fill in those spaces with one of the poinsettia leaves. And I'm going to use my Just Jade marker whoops, to color on my stamp. Now if you had a Just Jade ink pad, you could just use that of course, but I, I don't have that. Whenever the new ink colors come out, I kind of, um, I just buy a pack of the markers because I want to see which color I think I'm going to use a lot of before I commit to buying all the ink pads. So I find the markers to be really economical. Now, if you're wondering why my ink pad over here doesn't look like a Stampin' Up! ink pad, it's because it's not. <laughs> what I did is I bought a Mary Merlot reinker, um, and I just refilled that old stamp case or that old ink pad with the Mary Merlot ink, and it works just fine. Now, I don't do that with too many ink pads, um, but this one I did because it already kind of was like a maroon color and it went dry and I was like, ah, Mary Malo is a good match. I'm going to use that. So, so yeah, you can do that. All right, let's put this leaf right there. Okay. I think that looks good. And now I will show you the kissing technique. All right. So to do the kissing technique, the same, I'm taking the same stamp that I stamped those flowers with, okay? And I'm going to clean it off real quick because I'm actually going to flip it around on my block. And this is what I meant when I said for the kissing technique, you're going to need a, a patterned stamp, which would be my buffalo check stamp, and you're going to need a stamp that has a fairly solid image to it, no line art, no details to it. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to flip it over. So now the back side of the stamp, which is smooth and doesn't have any image to it, is now what is going to take and accept the ink. Okay, so I want to make sure that it's really stuck good there on my block. Okay, it is. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ink up, and again I'm doing this in Mary Merlot ink, ink up my background stamp, and I am going to take this stamp, which remember is flipped upside down, and I'm going to press it onto my background stamp as if it was an ink pad. And it'll pick up the pattern in the ink. And then I'm going to stamp over my poinsettias. Now it's not an exact match since I did flip the stamp over, but it's pretty close. I love this effect. I haven't done this technique in a couple of years actually. And okay, I'm going to apply more ink to the Buffalo Check stamp and I'm going to repeat the process. Now you might want to clean your stamp in between doing this just so the pattern doesn't get modeled since you might be, um, I don't know how to tell, touching your background stamp in a different spot every time. So you don't want to confuse the pattern, would that be the best way to say it? Okay, I'm going to apply more ink. I want to 
finish these last few flowers that I have on here. Now in the original sample that I saw, she also um, had done this same technique with the poinsettia petal leaves, but I chose not to do that. It looked really pretty on her card, but I was looking at mine and I'm going, um, I think mine would end up looking too busy. I don't know if I maybe stamped more flowers than she did. I don't know, but I decided to leave it be. And it's okay that it goes out of the lines a little bit. I'm totally okay with that. It will still look nice. Okay, and we'll do our last flower right here. So, I don't know. I don't know what other... I'm not actually familiar with a lot of the other... It doesn't have to be a background stamp, actually, that you're doing the kissing technique with. Any stamp you have that has a pattern to it will work for this technique. So it doesn't have to be a large one like our background ones. Okay, now we're ready to finish our card. Bring in my card base and we'll glue this down. I remember one year, um, and this was a long time ago, maybe like 10 years ago, there was a set called Wild About You and it had solid animal images in it. Really cute, like something you would use for a kid's card or a, a baby card. And there was the this adorable elephant. I still have a stamp set. And he, I did the kissing technique with the elephant. It was so cute. So, so cute. Oh, look at that. I see I had my card upside down. Ah. Uh, hmm. Let me see if I can peel this off. Yes, I can. Because I really wanted this flower to be up at the top there. That's the great thing about this liquid glue is you've got some time to readjust and reposition it. Okay. And let's bring in our greeting. I really need to just throw that out because I keep grabbing it by accident. Okay. And I'll put that right there. Okay, and we're going to add a few little touches to this card. So I'm bringing in some Just Jade Ribbon and the Gold Cord from the Wonders of the Season Ribbon Combo Pack. And I also have some metallic pearls. And specifically, we're going to be using, um, oh, look, a stray rhinestone. We're going to be using the gold ones. The pack comes with both silver and gold. But I'm just going to use the gold. And I'm going to put five of them right in the center of that point set of there. So that's why I repositioned the, stand, the paper, because I wanted that flower to be exposed. So I could put these on there. I love the touch of gold that this adds. Okay, we're done with those. And now I'm going to actually tie both of these together. I couldn't decide which one I wanted to use, so I thought I'll use both of them. So I'm going to unspool them and tie them together in a bow. Um, it does get a little bit tricky, but it's possible to do it. You just have to watch where you're um, stringing it through. Now, I like to make a big loop like this. That way, it, do, it tends not to get mixed up with what I'm trying to uh, create the second loop from. Okay, here we go. And then I can adjust it and make it smaller afterwards. But I used both because, number one, I couldn't decide. But I also wanted to pick up the jade of the leaf and the gold from those pearls and from the embossing. So that sentiment is also from the poinsettia petals stamp set and I stamped it in Versamark ink on a piece of Mary Merlot cardstock and then I pu punched it with one of our circle punches. I think it was a two and a half inch, two and a quarter inch. I can't remember. It's in the back of the annual catalog and then I'm going to use a glue dot to here, this ribbon right below the sentiment there. Okay, so that is card number one. The kissing technique. I love this. I'm gonna have to look through my stamps and see what other stamps I have that would work well for this, okay? 
All right, now the second one uh, technique we're gonna do is braiding of paper. Whoops, things are falling off my desk. Okay, so this is the card that I made with the braiding technique, and this is the braiding technique right here. Okay. All right, and what you're going to start with are four one half inch by 12 inch strips of designer series paper. And how I cut these, um, the way I cut it is, and this idea was from my, my team leader, Lissa Zolanik, and I just thought it was so much fun and looked so pretty, I had to share it. So the way she taught us to do this was to cut a two inch by 12 inch piece of designer series paper, then cut that two by 12 inch piece into four half inch sections, okay? And you can see these patterns are just the reverse of each other. Okay, and then you're going to want your liquid glue because what we're going to do is make right angles with these, like this. I just learned this technique yesterday. Okay, you're gonna put a little dab of glue right at the end of one of those strips, the top top left strip, and then take the top right strip and put it over top of that so that they're glued together at a right angle. And you do want your patterns to be oriented this way, meaning um, you have one side facing up and then the reverse side facing up on the left side, and then you want the uh, reverse pattern up here and then the other pattern down here. And then we're gonna glue these two together. So, And the reason that it's it matters how you have the patterns facing is because of when you braid, that will determine how your patterns are showing when you're braiding. Okay, so those two are glued together. Let me wipe my glue off my surface here, otherwise my paper is going to stick to it. Okay, whoops, some of it's leaking out the edge here. Go. Okay, then you wanna position your papers so that they're sort of nested in each other like this, okay? Like that, like an upside down V. All right, then what you want to do is take this top left strip and you're going to fold it so that it comes down next to your bottom strip on the right, just like this. Okay, and then you're going to take the top strip on the left and you're going to fold it so it comes next to that one. And we're going to go back and forth and work our way down. You can use your bone folder if you want to get your creases just right. Now I've got glue on my fingers. And I will show you the whole process right now. I did not make one ahead of time because I figured, just like when she showed us, it would take us uh, take us watching the whole thing done to really understand how to do this. Of course, some people may get it super fast because they're creatively smarter than I am and quicker than I am. I tend to be a thinker and I went to school for accounting, so my head deals with numbers and facts. I still prepare tax returns every season, um, just for family and friends. I don't do it as a business. It's more like a favor. So I get pretty busy though during tax season because I do prepare quite a few, but I enjoy it actually. I don't enjoy paying taxes. But I enjoy preparing the returns. I like researching all the stuff and just trying to find ways to legally lower someone's tax bill because they always get so excited when I find deductions for them. Okay, so notice how we're going back and forth. And so it's mixing up these patterns. Now, I was gonna use Tis the Season Designer Series paper until I realized it's only six by, in six, by six inches. So you could use it, but you would have a much smaller strip and it wouldn't um, cross the entire front of your card. 
The other thing I thought about doing though was six, if you only have six by six inch square paper is to glue two of them together so that you end up with a 12 by 12 inch sheet. So you could cut a two inch or a half inch by six inch strip and another half inch by six inch strip and glue them together. The only thing I worry about is that weakening the integrity of the braid. And you just keep going until you get all the way to the end. Oh, so has anybody started their Christmas shopping yet? I've already begun. I was a little concerned that things might take longer to get here or not be on shelves or something. So I went ahead and started. But honestly, this year, we are not buying as many gifts. My daughters are, are older now. So Santa, unfortunately, does not come to our house anymore. And they have decided they really don't want a lot of stuff and they don't need a lot of stuff they would rather travel so we're trying to find some trip ideas for the holidays i may have a mother that doesn't enjoy traveling but i do it for them <laughs> i like hanging out with them so so i do travel for that reason okay i'm gonna get those last little pieces and then i will um, get my card base out here so we can glue it to the card. Okay. Oops. So I have a piece of crumb cake cardstock, four and a quarter inches by 11, folded in half at five and a half inches. And I am going to, oh, you know what, before I apply it, I want to do some stamping. So I'm going to use the gather together set with this giant leaf because I really, really wanted to make a fall card. And I'm going to take some Cajun Craze ink and I am going to stamp. Sort of, I'm going to stamp all over my card front, actually. I was just going to do it diagonally, but when I did that, I really didn't like the way it looked. So I'm going to go all over and I'm starting in the center so that I can make sure all my images fit. And I really am going to go all over. I wanted to completely cover my card base. So once I've stamped all these fall images, I'm going to go back and um, put little leaf tips in where I think it looks a little bare. So like right here, I will put that one. And I'm going to put one up top there. Just a little tip of a leaf and I'm going to put one down there. I wanted a really, really full look to this set. Then I'm going to bring in a Sahara Sand ink pad. And I'm going to take the little spackle stamp from the Gather Together set. And I'm going to go over and further fill in those little gaps in between each of those leaves. Splatter stamps are one of the most versatile stamps you can have because if you're looking at a card and you need to fill in an area or you just want an extra little bit of something to your project, they almost always fit the bill. Okay, can never have too much of that. All right, we're done with that particular stamping. Now we can attach our, our braid here. I'm going to run two lines of, well, I have Fast Fuse, but you can use Tear and Tape. You can use the new Stamp and Seal Plus, which is the replacement for Fast Fuse, but I have so many of these refills left. So I'm just going to lay my piece down here. I want to get an idea of where I want it to be before I put the adhesive down. So, okay. And I'm going to run two lines of it just because that's about oops, how wide my project is got off track there a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to put this right there. And then I'll use my paper snips to trim off the excess. And 
those are scraps that you can most definitely throw away. Now, if you see things like this happening um, with little pieces popping up, all you have to do, take your liquid glue and put little dabs of it down. You don't want a whole lot because you don't want it oozing out everywhere. You can just push it down like that to get it to stick. Okay, I actually have another technique to show you on this card I just realized. Okay, this, I actually raided my scrap bin. Do you guys have a little scrap bucket that you keep on your desk? I raided mine to find some pieces I could use on this card and I found this frame that I stuffed in there and it's from Brushed Metallic Cardstock. So I'm going to put that on my card and I wanted it to be raised because when I put it over top of this braid here, I didn't want it, I just didn't want it glued down in a curve. So I'm going to use some foam adhesive strips because stampin dimensionals are too wide for this, but I found out these foam adhesive strips are the perfect length or the perfect width for the two um, sides of this. I'm only going to put them on the left and right sides. I originally had bought these foam adhesive strips to make shaker cards, and I have made lots of shaker cards with that. And I did it in a live with the posted for you stamp set and punch, uh, probably about a month ago, I think. But it also comes in handy for things like this, where you have to glue on something really skinny and narrow. Okay, I'm putting that right there. All right, now I'm gonna pull out, these were die cut from Brushed Metallic Cardstock um, with the Gathered Leaves dies. And we're gonna do some stamping on here. I'm gonna show you something. Okay, so I, I raided my retired stamp stash and I found this one because I wanted to make a thank you card. And this is All Things Thanks. It's retired, but I just love all the different fonts in it. And I want to say thanks for everything. And I'm going to put it on my stamp here. I'm going to line that up. Actually, here's a trick for getting it on your block when you have some scripty font like this. I lay it down and kind of match it up to what's on the stamp case. And then I take my block and press on it. And that gets it on my block nice and straight. Okay, so the two ink pads I'm using for this technique are Cajun Craze and Soft Suede. Okay, and... Take a blending brush, which this is a makeup brush, a makeup blending brush, but I happen to know that Stampin' Up! is coming out with their own blending brushes in the January through June mini catalog. I don't have the catalog yet, but I saw the online copy. The blending brushes are in there, so these will be available soon. And oh my goodness, I just bought mine actually three days ago, like uh, two days before I was able to see the catalog online, I got them. But bad timing, right? So here's what you can do. I'm going to dip this in the Cajun Craze ink pad. And I'm going to swirl the color on the top of my stamp here. The part that says thanks in real big letters. Swirl some color onto there. Okay, I'm going to go pretty heavy. All right, and then what I'm gonna do is take some scratch paper and get the excess ink off of there because I'm gonna switch colors now. Now I'm going to um, put my brush in the soft suede ink pad and I'm going to throw some color on the bottom part of my sentiment. And I'm going to slightly come up and overlap where I applied the Cajun craze. And the reason being is because I'm hoping I get a blended look. It worked out great when I made this card yesterday. Let's see how it works now. So this is very vanilla cardstock. And let's stamp it. Ooh, look at that. Two tones of colors. Now if you want it darker, you could go ahead and apply even more color to it, but I'm okay with that. Now I'm gonna use a stitched nested label die to cut out this sentiment. And I'm going to place it so that my sentiment is more towards the um, left side of the 
of the die cut because I'm going to leave a little bit of extra space there on the right side for my leaf embellishments. a little crooked okay we can set that aside and we'll finish this card now I'm going to put the stamp and dimensionals in the middle of this piece right here because it definitely needs to be lifted I was really excited about those blending brushes. I have seen so many people use them, but I never bothered to get a set. And then I finally did, and <laughs> two days later, Stampin' Up! comes out with them. Now, if you if you want a January through June mini catalog, just send me an email or leave me a message or a comment on this, and I will most certainly send you a catalog package once the catalogs become available. If you have ordered from me in the past six months, you're automatically on my list. So you don't need to do anything if that's you. But if you haven't ordered from me, um, you can either order to get automatically put on the list or, like I said, just email me, Nicole at the joyful .com, and I will send you my catalog package. I love putting them together. I always thought, I want to put it together a catalog package like I would want to get. Because I think it's fun to get that stuff in the mail. All right, now I'm going to use cinnamon cider in color enamel dots to sprinkle around this card. Okay. Put one down there by the leaf. And I'll put another one up there by that leaf. And then I'm going to put another one by the sentiment. I try not to think too hard about where I'm putting embellishments on my card because I find when I do that I end up not very happy with where I'm putting them so I just I just do it without thinking about it okay so that's the breeding technique great way to use up all those little bits and pieces of your designer series paper right and this is the card that we made that used the kissing technique so if you want any of the supplies to make these cards today just head to my store shop with nicole.stampinup.net and you can order that way i have a rewards program um, because i am really appreciative of my customers so i want to show my appreciation by rewarding them and if you have any questions or comments about the projects or techniques i made today please leave a comment because I'm happy to respond to you. Um, I really want everybody to enjoy and love stamping. I love it, and I love sharing it with you. So, all right, guys, I will see you next Thursday at 11 a.m. Bye.